alleged embodied identity and also that um, a couple of the people that I worked with adopted researcher identities with me. findings with regards to identity, one more than noticing and one possibly more substantive finding. And then there is also the philosophical contribution to the field of identity that I've made in the identity chapter. So the field of identity is recognised by those who occupy it as a very confusing place. And when I first started my readings in identity and I spoke to an identity scholar at our university, I couldn't make sense of it because people use the term to mean different things. And when somebody is firmly embedded in their paradigm, their use of the term against somebody else's use of the term makes no sense. And so there is that Thing of it being, Mendita calls it constitutively determined. And I tried to get to grips with different ways that people conceptualise identity. And as I read those different conceptualizations, those different identity paradigms, what I recognised across all of them is that people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities hadn't been considered within them. And so in this thesis, I have considered people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities against the backdrop of half a dozen or so different identity paradigms. So I've looked at an essentialist understanding of identity. You know, when you say the word identity, people think that you're pointing to a person, or but that sometimes it's used to point to a group. Sometimes it's the thing that changes, sometimes it's the thing that stays the same. And so it's that sort of muddle that understanding the different conceptualizations of identity mops up to some extent. So an essentialist conception of identity sees identity as a kind of core, true self, an essential, your identity, your personal identity. It is who you are, unchanged by all things. And then there's a, a kind of extension to that, a more constructed version of an essential identity in which your identity is a core material that is shaped by your life experiences. So this is who, and within those narratives, you have that sense of a, who you were meant to be, like as if the core material was supposed to build to a particular shape, but because life put this pressure on you or that pressure on you, then that changed that shape. And all the while I was reading identity, I was really alert to mentions of identity in relation to people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities. And I remember talking to Heather Bailey about her daughter who has a profound and multiple learning disability, profound intellectual and multiple disability. And she said, she is my identity. And you got a sense of, you know, this core material that would have been Heather that would have grown to a particular shape, being so impacted by the birth of her daughter and all the consequences of caring for her daughter, that it is, that it's sort of formed in the shape of her daughter. She is my identity. And then to go completely in the other direction, a structuralist conception of identity doesn't see any essential element, any personality. Personality is a dangerous word to use there because that slips us into psychology rather than philosophy, but they don't recognize there being anybody that you were meant to be or supposed to be or were before your life experience. They view you as wholly shaped by your life experience. So I was imagining it as people as clay and then they're travelling down a conveyor belt 
it's their movement through time and as they move through time different things happen to them so these imprints come at them from the side like little cookie cutter pieces and so that by the time you get to the end of the conveyor belt you are a particular shape and you are that shape because of the experiences you've encountered and so your identity is built of the life experiences that you have and you think about the difference between you know a Tory politician who's had a privileged upbringing and a lad from the Birmingham coalfields who has had anything but a privileged upbringing and how their identities might be different when you meet them as adults and that is accounted for by those different life experiences under a structuralist um, sense of identity. And then there were performative ideas of identity. So identity is a performance that you put on in order to access the social space. And so people who subscribe to a performative model of identity, and this is in many ways the dominant model of identity within um, our, our current situation. It's Taj, oh, I forget their names, but it's T and T, Taj and Turner um, are the main reference points here. But the idea is that you put on a performance in accordance to your social space. So who you are with your friends is different from who you are with your grandma, is different from who you are at work. And this is a performance identity. And then there are people who say, well, no, hang on a minute, because although there might be some essential elements that are a part of who you are, for example, different skin color, the meaning of those elements to your identity isn't in the elements themselves, like it doesn't mean anything to you in particular that you have one colour skin or another, but it holds meaning collectively, that we have prejudices against people of particular skin colours, or we have prejudice against people of particular backgrounds, or whatever it is, but those, that understanding is held in the meaning constructed around those things rather than in the things themselves. And so they look at a discursive identity where identity is held in the language that we use and that is shaped between us in conversations. And then there is um, a group that I just termed the beyond group and they're fantastic for uh, stretching your brain. So what they do is they look at all the assumptions that previous conceptualizations of identity have been based upon, like that identity is located in a person or that um, identity is um, stru structural, or that it is a performance, or that it is found in language, or that it's a particular place in time, and they just question all of those and then go, well, what is identity in this? It's a bit cinema palm, but, you know, it's, there is no spoon. It's uh, a beyond conceptualisation of identity. And so as I was doing the literature review to underpin my identity work, I was also doing the philosophical work to place people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities within each of those paradigms. But for the purposes of this work, I needed not a definition of identity so much as a working model, something that I could take into the field and say, this is what I am meaning by identity. And so I chose a very pragmatic um, idea of identity as recognised self. And I can link that to quite a few of the different paradigms, like in an essentialist model of identity, you have this true you inside and you might speak it, you might show it in your actions or you might hide it. But there is always that sense of who you are and you recognise yourself in your identity. And in a performative model of identity, it's about adopting the performance that's relevant to the social group that you're trying to be a part of. So you might want to be like a goth and adopt uh, a goth identity. And the, the identity that you're adopting is a group identity. It's not held by a particular person, but you're picking to adopt it because you recognise it as like, I am one of these things. So you, there's a recognition of self within that. So I was just approaching identity in the field very, very simply as recognised self. And I was imagining that my use of novel objects might give us a liminal threshold against which we could recognise self, which is and is not what happened as it turned out. But my two findings with regards to identity after the data analysis, one, my, my more of a noticing, was that 
some of the people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities that I worked with adopted researcher identities through the process of doing research with me. And that's really interesting to think about because they are not people who necessarily understand what a researcher is. So how can you adopt an identity without knowing what that identity is? But the um, lens through which I spotted that was a very particular um, description of identity given by Paul Baker and Cooper, Brew Baker and Cooper. And they are trying to navigate the complexity of the field of identity. So they say the same sort of thing that I thought at the start of my reading, which is just, we are using this word to mean too many different things. How can we possibly have a conversation when, when you say identity, you mean this, and when I say identity, I mean this, and it's just getting muddled. And their, their paper is saying, it's just getting muddled, let's sort it out. And what they do is they parcel up the work that identity does in different paradigms into different groupings and say so in some situations identity is doing this work and in some situations it's doing this work and I think they had three maybe four different th themes of the work that identity does and the one that I latched onto was that it serves as a situated subjectivity so it is a sense of who one is a sense of one's social location and then building on that sense of who one is and a sense of who one is in a particular social location, a determination of how to act in that situation. And what I saw with Becky and Senan was that when they encountered me in the situation in which we worked, they orientated themselves to the work in hand. There was an expectation, a felt expectation of, oh, it was like, oh, you're here, we'll be getting on with doing, like we've got important work to do, we'll be getting on with doing this. And so there was just that flicker of a researcher identity seen through the Brubaker and Cooper lens of it being a situated subjectivity. But my substantive finding with regards to identity um, was that at an embodied level, identity was sometimes experienced as shared. And it was really interesting noticing that come through my field notes because I'm using terms like I and we to denote either me or me and somebody else. And then the use of those terms sort of shifts and what I am pointing at becomes an us. And so there were these moments where when we flowed in consciousness together towards common intention, it was as if we were individual currents in an ocean that momentarily flowed alongside each other as a single current. And my experience of myself in those moments was of myself as an us. And that is something that the deeper inspection of the data reveals in multiple little ways. And it was really interesting because I said I have been alert to people's mentioning of identity. So I mentioned um, Heather saying about her daughter, she is my identity. I I've also met parents who um, say they lost their identity when it when they had their child. I I met um, Mary's sister Esther and Mary was a young woman with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities who led very adventurous life. She went you know mountain biking and white river rafting and things like this and Esther talks about how hard her family worked in order to give Mary these different opportunities and to put Mary in these different spaces. And that by doing that, they met more of Mary, they saw more of Mary. And it reminded me of a performative identity. They were essentially pushing her out onto these different stages and then sitting in the audience to see who she would be in this space and meeting more of Mary through this performance. But there was another 
really key mention of identity that happened to me early on in my studies. I had to do a presentation for the Centre for Research and Inclusion about identity and I was presenting to people in our department, well amongst the people I was presenting to were people in our department who study identity and I was only newly reading into the field so I was thinking well, it would be ridiculous if I stand up and tell them about identity. So I just stood up and asked the questions. Is identity a core self? Is identity something that changes over time? Is identity my membership of a particular group? Is my identity created by my life experiences? Or is my identity something that was in me all along? Is my identity a performance that I give in particular? Is my identity found in the meaning of my words? Is in an, And I did all the beyond questionings as well. Is identity located in a particular place and time? Is there? And I just asked all these questions. And as I sat down, my colleague Catherine, who had a daughter with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities who died when she was 34 years old and I did have, before Johanna died, I did have the pleasure of meeting her. She just leant over to me and she said, I didn't know who you wanted me to answer as, myself or Johanna. And it was really noticeable that in that room full of people, as I had said, is my identity a core essence of myself? Is my identity something that I've built over time? Nobody else had any confusion over who I was asking those questions about. Everybody else had thought it was about them. But my colleague, who has been mother to a person with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities for 34 years, didn't know who to answer as, because her identity is blended with Johanna's identity, even after death. And there's a nice little loop in this, in which identity originally was a concern of mathematics and the natural sciences. It was about determining a thing from another thing so that we can count them, these individual units, you know, identifying units of whatever it is. And if you follow through in maths and those natural sciences, you will find now an admission of fuzzy boundary identities where the mathematics that people do recognises that there are entities that are unique but not distinct and Johanna and Catherine are unique but not distinct they have a shared identity and my experience those moments in the field where my experience of self my recognition of self was of an us were moments of blended identity and that's my main identity finding. Mm -hmm.